All right, so everybody's drooling over this new website by Diagram, which is an AI design tool. And it really just has some awesome interactions. Uh, I loved this wand one. Everything has a little hover. They're all DOM elements. Uh, yeah, there's just a ton of cool stuff going on. So be sure to check this out. It's by Marco Cornaccia. And uh, he's a San Francisco native, so maybe I'll see him at Figma conference or something. Anyways, uh, just wanted to do a little study of some of his interaction design. And we'll go ahead and build this one today with the wand wiping over these icons here. So we'll call that a wand wipe. And it's basically a mouse follow interaction uh, with a couple nice little HTML setup tricks to get this thing working. Hey there, Web Bay. So I've already got a card here and a grid, and then there's just a faded kind of overlay right here. So hopefully you can set all this stuff up. I'm going to assume that you know how to do all this. I'm just going to really focus on the interaction, uh, how we're going to structure the HTML for that as well as the CSS. So uh, let's have a look at what we have so far, though. So we have this div called card, and this just has some padding and a max width and overflow set to hidden. And then we have card content. This is just some text in here. And it's set to posi position relative right now because you'll notice that it came, it like was above the wand and we'll see that in a minute here. But within there, I just have a heading and some text. And then we have a card icon grid here, which is also position relative. And I shifted over to the left by negative three rem and down by 2.3 rem, just so that it, um, it takes up the space of the padding there. And then we have our fade overlay, which is just a linear gradient. So let's go ahead and get started. The very first thing I'm going to do is we'll create a sibling to all of these other divs here and we'll call it our card wand area. Now this is gonna be position absolute and the inset is set to cover or full here so that it's 0% on the top, the right, the bottom and the left side there. And then if I scroll down, we'll see we have no other styles applied to that. Now within the card wand area, this is the whole thing that we're going to move. But within that, we're gonna have a wand on the left side and just basically some black overlay or whatever color the card is, is gonna be the matching color to make it seem like we're wiping those icons away. So to build the wand, we'll just create a div called wand. And now this is gonna have flex vertical. And then we're just gonna program our width to be three rem, our height to be 100% of the parent div. So that card wrapper, or sorry, wand wrapper, and then overflow set to hidden on that. And down here, we're gonna set the border radius on the top left and the top right to one rem on each side. This is so that we'll be cutting off kind of the uh, that top of the wand there so it looks like it has the curved edges. And within there, we're gonna put our tip. So the tip is gonna be a little bit of color on the top and then the wand shaft as well. So as a sibling to wand, let's add our wand tip and our wand shaft. And we're just gonna be using the height of 26% here so that the wand tip only takes up 26% of its parent, which is of course that wand. And then we'll set the linear gradient here. We're using kind of this bluish color, CFDC F1 into white and then to back to that same bluish color. So we're doing a nice linear gradient here that gets us that kind of, if I zoom in, that kind of, um, what is it called? Like a light, like it has lighting almost, right? Um, this was really cool. And I thought this was really well done by Marco to create an actual item on the page using CSS and linear gradients and uh, stuff without using images. You know, most times I would see people use images or SVG or something, which is fine too, but um, super creative. I thought that he was using linear gradients here. And then the one shaft is gonna be very similar. This one's gonna be set to sizing to expand to fill. And I just set the width to 100%. That's gonna, so the tip will take up 26% and the shaft will just take up the rest. And then we have down here, the image and gradient, very similar to what we had with our setup on the tip there. Except this time we're going to black to kind of more grayish. Here I can show you this color is like that grayish color here and this is at 40% uh, and then into black. And the 40%, this is the, the position on the gradient scale, not the opacity or anything. Of course, the, the alpha is set to 100 here. So that takes care of the wand. The last thing we need to get is we're, everything to the right of the wand is going to be this needs to be that black color. So we'll drop in another div and I'm gonna call it wand blur. And this is just essentially like a gigantic div. And I made the width 120% of its parent. And since it's um, the origin is gonna be from the left side there, you know, we've set the it position absolute to the bottom left, as you can see right here. What's gonna happen when we set that width to 120% is it's gonna overflow the right side and which we want because we want when our mouse position is all the way over here, we wanna make sure that there's no sort of um, icons peeking out. So if I, you know, if I took the width down to something like 80% or even made it 100%, it still would be okay, but we'll give ourselves a little margin for error with that 120%. And it doesn't matter because we're setting overflow hidden with our card there. 
And then I say set the height to 200% because what we're going to do with this thing is we are going to use the 2D and 3D transforms and we're going to move the Y down to say like 20, oop, not on this one. We're gonna move it on the card wand area. We're gonna shift this transform down, say like 25%. So that'll be over 25% and this will be over something like 50%. And we could actually set this right now because we're going to override it in our interactions so that it kind of looks good as we have it in designer. But let's go back to the wand blur real quick. I just want to show you the rest of that. We also applied this blur effect. So this is going to kind of blur the edges. If I, let's see, I'll go back to the card wand area. And just to show you this, we'll come in the Y here. And now you can see we're getting kind of this blurry. This right here is what I'm talking about. As we go over the icons, we get that sort of blur effect. So it makes it look like it's uh, kind of, it's not abrupt, right? Uh, so we'll set that at 50-50. I think that is fine. And then again, because this wand blur is going so high here, we don't see anything up over here. And then the last thing to consider is that the, the wand area over here, let me see as I, uh, let's bring it up a little bit. And left, okay, and now the main thing that we want to make sure is that we're always seeing the text. Uh, let me check the card content. So we have our Z index of five here. You know, if we didn't have a Z index, then it would look like the wand is overwriting the text. But let's keep that Z index at five so that it shows up above the wand. Okay, and now I'm going to come back to card wand area and we'll reset this to something like 50, 50. And that's all our interaction. Now that we kind of understand those concepts, our interaction shouldn't be that difficult. So we'll set the interaction here on the card. And if I come to interactions, I'm gonna have two interactions for this. I'm gonna have one for just desktop and then one for everything else that's a touch device. So we'll start with desktop and this is gonna be mouse move over element. And I'm gonna uncheck tablet, phone and phone. And we'll select an action. We will play an, a mouse animation. And let's go ahead and create a new animation. And now when we're, we wanna affect our card wand area. This is kind of wrapping the entire wand and that wand blur that we have there. And so when the mouse is at an X position of zero, we wanna make sure that our X is at say 0%. So it's all the way to the left here. And when it's at 100%, we wanna make sure that our X is, let's see how 100% looks. Uh, yeah, let's start with that. I think that's gonna be just fine. And so if we even go live now, we can kind of see that we're getting this effect of the wand wiping everything. Um, but we also want it to follow the Y. So let's go ahead and add a move to the Y and we'll set it, I think 25% was kind of good as a start. And then uh, we'll have it kind of move up maybe to 20%. So it's not gonna move as much as the, as the, um, the X there actually. So we're gonna need to set it quite a bit more because we want it to almost look like it's following the mouse, but we don't want it to really go too far. So let's go ahead and when the mouse is up here at the top, so 0%, we'll set Y to something like, uh, let's set that to 20%. And when it's all the way down, we'll set this to something like 90%. Let's see how that looks. So now we're getting much more of that mouse follow effect. I think we could get even more. So let's just do 10 and 90. And let's see how that looks. I'm liking that quite a bit. I'm wondering if we just even go to zero and 100, how that looks, if that looks any better. Or if that's, it's a little too, a little too close for me. I kind of like it a little bit off. So 10 to 90 there. And then we also want some rotation and we'll link that to the X. So let's go back to when the X is, we want it to kind of tilt to the left as we're going to the left. Is that correct? Yeah, and then to the right. So at zero here, we'll set a rotation in the Z of negative uh, five degrees. So I'm all the way down here in the bottom right. Hopefully you can see that. And then when we're at 100%, we'll set a rotation, say something like 10 degrees. And we can see the wand is kind of poking out down here and that's not ideal. So what I'm thinking, I'm not sure if we're even gonna be able to get it that high. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like we are. So let's take the wand here and that's the y and the x so probably what's why it's getting that is that we're rotating it a little too far so let's go to five degrees and let's just save and see how that's behaving and we can see we're already getting something really nice i'm i'm really liking that actually i think you know i think we're done with desktop really that's all we need to do 
So not too bad, right? And then what we have for when we're on mobile is we just have a, we turn it into a click interaction. So let me bring this down a little bit. And when I click, it goes away. And when I click again, it comes back. So hopefully we can figure this out. I think the mouse follow one is actually more challenging. But we'll go ahead and actually name this. And I'm going to call this a uh, wand follow. Sure, why not? And we'll save that. And then we'll exit out of this. And now let's go ahead and create on the card. So make sure we have the card selected. A, another element trigger. And this one is going to be mouse click or tap. And we're going to deselect desktop and above. And we will start a new animation. Let's make it and we'll call this a uh, wand click, I guess. And so we'll get that card wand area. And now we're going to have to play around with, uh, what's it called? The initial state of this as well. So any initial state that we set in the interaction will actually override what we set within Webflow Designer. But I like this where it is here because we can kind of have a good look at everything that's going on. Anyways, let's start setting our initial states. So I think the initial state of the wand should be at something like uh, this is set as initial state. And these may not set as we're as we're setting them here, but they'll probably show when we play. Yeah, I see. Uh, and then the Y, I think we had, let's set it as something like 25%, I think was good. So print play. And there it is, maybe just a little bit lower. 30%, press play. Yeah, I like where that is. And then we also need to set an initial rotation. Uh, which way was it rotated on here? Let me bring it down. Okay, so it's, oh, there's Marco again. Wrong one. It was clockwise. So that will be a positive degree value. So we'll just set that to five and press play and we can see that there. Great, so our initial states are set and now we want to set our final states. So we'll just, for the card wand area, we'll set a move to 100% and we will do in the Y or let's, uh. Yeah, let's move it in the Y as well. I think we could move it kind of up a little bit. What did we start it at? 30%, so we'll take the Y to 25%. So it's a little, it's gonna go up some. And we'll set the ease to ease out in like 0.4 seconds. And then we also want to, we wanna move the rotation a little bit too. We'll just bring it to zero. Same duration and same ease. And let's play that. And nothing's happening, what's going on here? So let's preview. There it goes. Now it's working. Yeah, I think that's pretty nice, but we should be on the, let's go to tablet and check it. And yes, we're getting that. Now we just need to bring the wand back in. That's easy enough to do. So let's start another animation on second click. And we're going to duplicate the wand click, select it, hit the gear icon. And uh, we'll call this wand click uh, in. Sure, not a great, not a great naming convention going on there, but you get the idea. And we want to return it to the original positions. So we can delete these two and we'll just remove initial state, remove initial state, drag these on top of each other. And we'll make them take, uh, I like things coming back a little faster than when they start and we'll set them both on an ease. So let's save that. And we are in tablet so I can click and click, click and click. And that is great. And now let's see that it's working on all of our breakpoints even when the text starts scaling. So I think we just need to bring it down a little bit. So let's come into wand click and set the initial Y to 35% and the move to 25. Sure, I think we can leave that there. And then wand click in the move, uh, what did we say, 35%? Sure. So let's preview now. And I think that's quite a bit better. So yeah, I'm happy with that. And I will make this clonable so you can go explore and have fun with it. Um, I'm going to start looking at a couple of the other interactions on this site too. I think there's a lot of great stuff to study here. In particular, the one I'm... So I'm really excited about this, the particles effect. They're actually bringing in particles using particle.js, so a library there. And the light shadow kind of casting down from the wand. And then also this one, uh, yeah, this one's great. And then where was the other one that I liked? It's like this, it's magical one. Anyways, I can't find it now, but uh, you'll see it in a future video. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.